Well, hi there. I'm Diana Montford, the world's first transgender television journalist, born male, became female. We all know this, those of us who watch one another regularly. Anyway, my guest is woman of transgender experience, Ms. Julie Gray Owens. She is an activist. She is uh, quite uh, big and powerful in the Long Island transgender movement. Long Island, of course, being uh, uh, one of the five boroughs here in New York City. And we are going to talk about trans rights and all those tranny things we trans folk like to talk about. So, yes, don't just lie there. Trans right. something, yeah. <laughs> trans something. <laughs> well, hello. Hello. It's a great start. It's a great start. Um, there's a lot of things happening right now. Uh, yeah, a lot of things happening. I know. Uh, I know. Not all of them good. But, no. Uh, we certainly understand that. It's been a, uh, I, I thought the summer was going to be a very calm, peaceful, I would get caught up on things. And instead, it's been a fire drill yes. the whole summer. Uh, like being in a submarine that's leaking, yes. Well, uh, we did a demonstration in uh, Smithtown at the Army Recruitment Center uh, shortly after uh, Trump announced the military ban for transgender service people. Yes. Well, if you're watching this in a different country, we're seen all over the world, I'm happy to say. Uh, our dear President Trump, uh, uh, transgender people are allowed to serve in the military, but not now. Because Trump at 5 a.m. one morning just decided that he didn't want trans people in the military. The excuse being that, well, it costs too much to be trans. It costs nothing to be trans. And he is just being his usual malicious, gratuitously mean-spirited self. And, you know, Trump is trumping away. In short, Donald Trump you, you were saying. Well, the interesting thing, however, with that whole process has been the support of the um, Army and the Navy generals who yes. are in charge have been very supportive of the trans troops. Yes, and yes. At, at this Come moment, a little closer sure, can. at this moment, um, it's not clear what they're going to do with existing service people. We're hoping that they'll be allowed to continue to serve. Uh, certainly, uh, they've, many of them have tried to create a career serving. And many of them actually have created exactly, careers. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, we're, we're hoping for the best. But it was interesting to see that there was support from the leaders of, as I said, the different service uh, organizations. Mm -hmm. So that was a real positive in that way. Um, the actual whole issue is, uh, is very bad for our community and, and certainly continues this idea that somehow we're, we're not up to it, whatever up to it means. And that somehow we're not entirely human and from some undisclosed planet where lavender reigns supreme. Right. So we had that issue, obviously, late in the summer. And, of course, at the beginning of the summer, we had the fact that uh, gender was not, a, not passed again. Now, what is gender? Gender is the Gender Expression Non-Discrimination Act. Mm -hmm. um, here in New York State, it's the law that would be the um, anti-discrimination law to protect transgender and gender nonconforming people. And how long has it been before the... Since 2003, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Uh, we've been battling that battle since 2003. Are we any closer? <sighs> Two steps forward, one step back. I'm Who not knows? sure. I guess what I would say is, is that we are inches closer. Why inches closer? Because every year we meet more people. We make the public aware of the work that has to be done. Mm -hmm. The fact that um, our community is not protected. And every every month uh, trans people are getting together they're organizing uh, they're meeting each other they're doing things yes. uh, this weekend in fact i think is the philadelphia trans uh, well as you know this is on film and won't be shown sure. until later right but what i love is that every uh segment of the trans community is getting together in other words you don't have to be in politics you don't have to be let's just Lay it on the line. You don't have to be rich, white, and educated uh, trans people who are sex workers, trans people who are homeless, 
trans people who are of all races, all are forming admittedly often separate groups, but then all those groups coalesce and form one very strong group. Very necessary for our community, mm -hmm. and uh, the work continues. It's, uh, it's exciting to see some of the groups come together. It is. And uh, in the past year, we've done a lot of work in holding town halls across the state mm -hmm. to make those connections with different groups, different mm -hmm. communities or across New York State to try and uh, create a single voice or at least a single political agenda so that we can go after the things that we... Do you mean a need. single trans voice or do you mean a, a single voice. LGBTQ voice? No, I'm talking about a trans voice. Okay. We've shied away from um, working too deeply with LGB. Wouldn't you groups. say they've shied away from us? I would say that that's probably a possibility. There, there are a number of very strong advocates in the LGB community. That said, um, we are still not uh, fully uh, and warmly welcomed. No, if we're you will. not. No, we're not. And I think that it's important for our community to learn to stand on our own feet. And yes, this has but been a, <coughs> a big issue for us. <coughs> in, <coughs> Excuse in our me. Past. On the other hand. Many trans people don't have any money, whereas the gay men often have a lot of money. And by separating ourselves from the gay men, who are the owners of power in our society and the LGBTQ movement and have resources, sometimes you could say that we are absenting ourselves from the seat of power and marginalizing ourselves still more. I've always thought it would be wonderful if we could, you know, be the LGBTQ community as opposed to the LG, and then the Bs don't even acknowledge that they're bisexual, and us T folk are shunted off, you know, to be the country cousins and the Cinderella's of the uh, queer world. Well, I'd like to throw a different curve at you. How about we look at, um, mounting a campaign to not worry about the LGB community, mm -hmm. but worry about the cisgender community and have mm -hmm. the transgender community with the cisgender community unite and take the power and the resources from cisgender people. Now notice I'm being very clear about cisgender. Um, cisgender being people who are born in a gender and live that same gender. In other words, if, if you're born female and you adopt a conventionally female appearance or male and have a conventionally male appearance. Exactly. I think that it's important for us to reach out to um, the general public. Who are often much nicer to us than gay men. Lesbians are pretty nice to us, but gay men can be quite brutal and nasty. Well, I don't want to generalize. What I, what I do think is important is, is that we, th we, we said just, just a few seconds ago that it was important for us to um, somehow connect to the power that gay men have. And I would suggest to you that there is power in a group of cisgender people, whether they be men or women, yes. whether they be gay. More or power than... Uh, exactly. So our work, you know, if there are cisgender gay men who want to help the trans community, we welcome them. But we don't welcome them because they're gay, we welcome them because they're cisgender. So it's a different way of looking at things. And I think what it does is it opens up our vista to look for support in perhaps surprising places that we've never done that before. Well, I believe Pope Francis, of all people, mm -hmm. is not hostile to us. I won't say he's trans positive in spite of his white dress, but he is uh, not hostile to us. No, and he's a, a, a wonderful leader of the Catholic religion. Um, at that, fr from that being said, um, I'm not sure that he would send money. No, he wouldn't. He <laughs> really Which I think wouldn't. is really important. He might give us his community. old white dresses, the okay. ones with the incense stains on them and everything. Right, right. Yeah. But I, th I think what's important is... Watch, I'll get a bunch of nasty letters. You whore, how dare you s trash our wonderful Pope. That always happens when I make jokes about the Pope. I'm kidding, okay? Relax. 
There you go. There I go. There you go. Godless tart that I am, yes. But I think, but I think our outreach has to be to the general public and make them aware of our issues. Well, there was a famous female politician here in New York City who shall remain nameless, who was in a great position of power. I'll, I'll just say it. Chris Quinn, remember her? Mm -hmm. She was Speaker of the City Council. She completely ignored LGBTQ issues until the straight community said, what's wrong with this woman? I mean, she's ignoring her own community. And finally, she decided not to ignore us because she realized that it was bad for her political currency to be seen as someone completely indifferent to the fate of her trans, gay, lesbian fellows. You Community, know? exactly. Yeah. yeah. I think that any uh, person who's run for office and is part of the LGBTQ community has had to be careful in how they presented themselves, especially going back, you know, in the very early days, yeah. 20 years ago or, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. It, it's probably a lot easier to do now. And I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm saying it's easier than it was back in maybe the 90s or early 2000s and so forth. Yeah. So I'm, I'm willing to give everybody a break as far as that goes. No, I, I, I do not give her a break or okay. a pass. I, I really feel that she should have done infinitely more to help the LGBTQ community. And I feel that she didn't and not my kind of person. Okay. Well, I accept that and, and that's very understandable how you, how you would feel that. But I think our direction is... I mean, we are not elected officials and we do a lot for our community. Mm -hmm. Why don't some LGBTQ elected officials do as much, you know? We can do it because we don't really care whether someone approves of what we're doing or not. Yes, we tell rude pope jokes and other exactly. things. Exactly. Yes. And um, because we can, we have that freedom that we're not necessarily worried about someone, you know, doing. And our next election and all that. Exactly. Yes. Um, so, with that said, you know, elected officials are every two years, every four years, whatever it happens to be, are faced with. Uh, you know, a public that's going to vote for them or not vote for them based so on who they are. So they have to place the so largest to, yeah, number. Exactly. Of, yeah. and, and it's obviously, again, it's getting easier for someone. But let's take a look at the New York State Senate. Um, as we know right now, there's only one out gay Brad senator. Brad Hoylman. Exactly. Yes. Uh, you know, a, a, a wonderful representative of the community, but only one. Yep. Uh, well, in the assembly, on the other hand, we have a lot of friends. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of out people and a lot of sympathetic. Dick Gottfried is straight, but he's been our champion for 25, yes. 30 years. You Am know? Amazing, amazing. 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 I've seen, I not only trash people, I also praise them when they're, okay, uh, Danny O'Donnell, he's yep. wonderful. He's yep. openly gay. Um, I'm forgetting people. Deborah Helen, Deb I can't stand that woman. Oh. Uh, she fucked with St. Vincent's Hospital. She, you know, I do not trust or like her. I'm sorry. Uh, and she's not trans positive. I had to shame her into coming to one of our meetings. I said, where were you at yesterday's meeting? This was like five years ago. Mm -hmm. She said, she was, first of all, she was shocked that someone was talking to her that way. She, did you say, uh, well, well, I said, look, we're having a meeting next week. You'd better be there, okay? Because we put you where you are, lady. I have no fear, you know? Exactly. But you're not being reelected to your position. No, but in those <laughs> days, I still was in politics. <laughs> but I was getting so fed up with these people, I thought, right. forget it. So, no, not Deborah Glick. Uh, well, she is, she is part of the LGBTQ community who are members of the Assembly. Simple as that. Yes, but how much has she really done for us? I wouldn't even worry about it at this point. You know, the only thing that I'm, I'm concerned about at this point is what do we do for our community? And there's a lot of issues that have to be talked about. Such as? Well, obviously, the first thing is the Gender Expression Non-Discrimination Act, um, which would protect uh, transgender and gender nonconforming people from discrimination in housing, um, employment, and what mm. they call public services. Yes, but there are other ways to protect. Oh, you could stretch a point and say that the Civil Rights Act of 1964 protects us. Which has been tried before and hasn't worked. Actually. Right. Yeah. So you could say that, but we all understand. Yeah, you can that say a lot of things. Is, yeah. The reality is, I mean, we we are protected in New York because of a, a, a set of regulations that the governor uh, enacted in January of 2016. Governor Cuomo. Governor Cuomo. Um, but they are not laws. They can be rolled back, 
uh, and uh, there is no change to the human rights law in New York State, which makes the transgender and gender nonconforming community a protected class. Because of uh, wonderful Governor Cuomo, I had my uh, birth certificate, social security card, uh, you know, the whole deal, uh, changed to my legal name of Diana Montford. Excellent. Diana Montford. Campbell. Excellent. Thank yeah. you, Governor. Yes. Thank you, Governor. And de Blasio, Mayor de Blasio, Bill de Blasio. I have a city ID because I don't drive a car. No, in other parts of the country, they're saying, what? <laughs> in New York City, you do not have to learn to drive. We have buses, cabs, subways. So I never learned to drive. Can you believe that? And I have a city ID. And I could get a state ID, but it's a lot easier. The line is exactly. a lot shorter. You know. Well, again, the mayor has been a big supporter. Yes, he is. Um, and and he is married to a lesbian, a former lesbian, a woman of color. She's still a woman of color, but she's a former lesbian. There you go. I also <laughs> tell rude racial jokes. Yes, you were saying. <laughs> But my point is, is that um, that's one issue, for example. Um, there's a number of things that people are starting to get more involved in. Um, as one thing that we're working on that we just uh, uh, had an opportunity to find out from the uh, National Center for Transgender Equality is they are doing a uh, scorecard for police departments uh, yes. across the United States. Yes. And the reason that I was involved was they had a problem um, connecting with uh, the Nassau County Police Department, uh, which is one of the county departments on Long Island. And uh, this past week, I've had an opportunity to, to meet with the acting commissioner, mm -hmm. um, the inspector that's in charge of you know, community relations. And we're already setting up dates for me to uh, speak to the recruits. Which so, is wonderful. Yeah, it's a, it's a great start. Um, Although if they're recruits, they're probably young and have a very different take on transgender from their elders who might be more hostile. Maybe. I think you're uh, exactly right about that, but I take it as if we crack the door, and if we crack the door, maybe I can sneak my foot in to hold the door yes, open, yes. and then after we get Sell the Sell them foot that in, encyclopedia, yes. Right, and then the knee, yes. and then the thigh, and maybe I can wiggle the shoulder in, and then pretty no, soon we, we bust the door open. You know? <laughs> yes, okay. So we, we take it slow, but that's another case where, um, and the scorecard that they're working on is uh, just amazing. The details, um, discussions about the uh, handling transgender and gender nonconforming people in jails and prisons. Well, don't they get, you are allowed to ask for protective custody? Yes. Under the law, all over the nation, you, if you are arrested, you are allowed to ask for protective custody. They will not hopefully, put you in a tank or in the general population. But what happens a lot of times is is that um, inmates and prisoners are put into isolation. Which is better is than the, being gang raped. Right. No, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't disagree with that. But um, that, that is, is protective also, custody. Right. But that is also um, Punitive. You know, dangerous for a, for a person to be under in, yes. or in those circumstances. Yes. Uh, there's a whole you know, prison reform movement regarding, you know, isolation and, and so forth. Well, many years ago, they used to have uh, queer sections in prisons, but that was later deemed unconstitutional. So that's a problem. The Warhol film star uh, Ken, uh, Holly Woodlawn mm -hmm. was arrested and she, in 1970, and she was put in the Queen area because just being trans was illegal then, so they arrested right. you just for living. And it was apparently much safer than today's supposedly more liberal, but actually more dangerous practice of putting trans folk in with the general population. I don't know the studies on that, but I do know that, for example, this police scorecard just went into so many different areas that um, it's going to be interesting to see what police departments across the United States receive a, you know, a, a green you know, yeah. uh, rating versus uh, how many get a yellow, which probably means, you know, there's a few things they need to fix, yeah. and a red, which is, oh my God, you know, put the warning signals out, yes. we have a problem here. Yes, but yes. I, think a lot of, I think a lot of departments across the country are gonna end up with red ratings. Meaning that they are unacceptably transphobic. 
Yes, and, and perhaps not even thought about the issue of transgender people, transgender citizens, and gender nonconforming citizens. Well, they dehumanize us and they take it for granted that we're all sex workers. And they dehumanize sex workers, cisgender and transgender. I think people are starting to get, get it, but uh, there's a lot of work that still has to be done. S both Caitlin and uh, Laverne, I'm very proud to say, watch this show. Caitlin and Laverne have done more for us mm -hmm. in three, four years than anyone aside from Christine Jorgensen has done for us, I would say. I would say from uh, a Long Island resident, I might add. Visibility, Joy, yeah, Joy visibility. Joy. And acceptance. Yeah, visibility and acceptance. People could no longer say, I don't know about transgender people. I don't know a transgender person. Uh, those of us who are of the correct age remember when Bruce Jenner was on oh weaving God, boxes. Oh, God, yes, yes. And women, and you one, know, would, yeah, would, would, would die to go out with him. Thing, exactly. Or go in with him. Right, exactly. Yeah. So... He That's was a cutie. Uh, exactly. Yeah. And um, the biggest thing now is, is is for... Well, she's cute, too. She's lovely. Yes. Caitlin. We're hoping that, that she... And I think she is becoming more aware of the issues. Well, we and, had to have a talk with her. Caitlin, exactly. I love you. But as you know, we have all uh, made it clear that you have to pony up to the community. You have to get in with us. Get in the water, girlfriend. The temperature is fine. And do more for the community and to her credit she has listened and she mm -hmm. is doing it. yeah it was it was interesting to watch her show when it was on I don't know if you had an opportunity I to saw see. one episode right. yes it was about a manicure I believe yeah it was the nice thing about the show was it seemed like each show they took a, uh, a group and highlighted them for just one little you know between commercial segments yes uh, whether it was uh, the GLAD organization yes, or yes, yes. Wh whatever it happened to be. And that was positive. Uh, it gave visibility to those groups. I even found the shallow, banal aspects of the show positive because instead of worrying about laws and s physical safety and all that, it's nice to be a trans woman who feels safe enough to say, I don't like my manicure, you know? I mean, that's good, you know? <laughs> I guess it's important. Yeah. <laughs> right now I'm I'm working on the other stuff. Like, does know? this lipstick look good on me? <laughs> good that we can be teenage girls, you know? Well, of course. I yeah. mean, that's, that's all a part of, that's the, the nice thing about being trans. Yes. You know, we, we get to enjoy those parts of it. Yes. But there is obviously a, a, a more serious side. And that work is what's really been driving my my schedule, if you will, yes. for the and for your past schedule few years. is full indeed. Yes, um, because we're doing a number of things. Obviously, I continue to do work on Long Island. We are um, and in the state legislature. Well, yeah, exactly. Uh, doing the the running out to running up to Albany uh, uh, yes, situation. I remember. And um, doing the uh, this past eighteen months, we've been doing uh, town halls, as I said, uh, in a number of cities across. New York State. Mm -hmm. And this coming year, 2018, we're looking to not only do town halls, which would be specifically for the transgender community, mm -hmm. but we're looking to do um, public forums. And that's really what we feel is the next step, which is to um, go to uh, a library in a town mm -hmm. and give a uh, Trans 101, if you will. Exactly. And have members of the community just talk about their life experience. Mm -hmm. Because I think when people hear our experiences, you win not only their brain, but you win their heart. Also, many people are startled to find that we're more alike than we are different. Mm -hmm. That, you know, we trans folk, yes, we do go to the bathroom, we do eat, we do love our families, we do have friends, we do, do have gainful employment if we're lucky. We do all sorts of things. We do what everyone else does. And we have dreams. Yes. We have goals. Yes. Things hurt us. God, yes. There are real. We're we're real people. We're we're flesh and blood, and it's important for again the general public to understand that. That's why, I'm I'm less interested in oh you know come and do a a, a trans one hundred one or a, or at a LGBT center or something. We're like preaching that. to the choir. Exactly. Yes. I'm I'm more interested in doing it at a library or doing mm -hmm. it at a a church. Yes. Uh, that's where we're going to get allies, um, and more allies mean more power. 
Yes, and also more safety. And if you remember, years ago, we were at a church in Albany, that lovely mm -hmm. old church, whatever it was where they allowed us to meet. That was very good. Exactly. That was uh, bringing trans leaders from around the state together yes. uh, and just having an open dialogue of, of our plans for that year yes. uh, as to what, what needed to be done and, and what was going to be done. And that was circa, what, 2003? Yeah, three or four, I believe, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken. Um, so that was a, a good period of time. How can people contact you if they want to discuss transgender issues, transgender laws? How do they contact you? Well, it's interesting because the last time I was here, I didn't have a way of, of, of doing it. But um, I hope you can see this. But why not read it for I our will, blind? I will, I will do that. Many blind Absolutely. people uh, listen to the show, if not excellent, watch it. Excellent. Yes. Well, first of all, I'm Julie Gray Owens, and it's uh, G-R-E-Y, not A-Y, uh, the Long Island Transgender Advocacy Coalition, also known as LITAC. You can look us up, uh, Google us, and you'll, you'll find it. But um, how you can get in touch with us, we have two Facebook pages. Um, Facebook.com slash groups slash LITAC and Facebook.com slash LI Trans Advocates. LI Trans Advocates. Um, and hopefully uh, you can reach us that way. Yes. We'd love to hear from you. And if you're watching this in other areas of the country or other nations, feel free to contact Julie Gray Owens and uh, you can discuss strategies for your own community and for you know, whatever, your own nation, whatever exactly. it is. Exactly. Okay, my guest has been transgender activist and woman of transgender experience, Ms. Julie Gray Owens, one of the great leaders in LGBTQ uh, New York, certainly a trans leader. Uh, she, as she has pointed out, you may contact her at the websites she mentioned, the addresses she mentioned. Anyway, I'm Diana Montford. This has been the Diana Montford Show. I love you a lot, whether you're trans or not, whether you're whatever you are, it's fine with me. You're, come on, we're a team, right? Anyway, I love you a lot, and I'll see you next time. And you take real good care of yourself, because there's only one you, and I love you a lot. I'll see you next time. Bye.